Today we are going to be using MacDex Python GUI Designer. The Python GUI Designer is incredibly easy to use as you just drag and drop elements onto the workspace and the code for them will automatically be generated. It is great for making a professional and practical prototype within minutes. For example, if you go to the toolbox ribbon and select the MySQL Database Manager, you can see the practicality of the Python GUI Designer. With this, you can create new databases, open previous databases, as well as browse data and execute SQL queries. All of this can be done easily and without having to write lengthy and complex pieces of SQL code. To open the Python GUI Designer, you will need to go to the file ribbon and click the arrow on the right hand side of the new icon. From there, select new Python script. Now head on over to the programming ribbon and click the GUI Designer icon. Each widget is similar to one page or display of an app. Click new to create your first widget. From here you can add elements by clicking on them and then clicking in the workspace where you would like to add them. You can also add containers such as the tab widget or the group box. And then finally here is where you add event functions. Once you have added an event function by writing the name of the event function here and clicking add new, you need to select the element and then the event function will appear here in the drop down menu. When you select that, the event function and the element will then be linked. I'm going to call this widget home and then I'm going to get rid of this. You can click the delete button or you can right click it and then select delete. The example I'm going to be making today is a currency converter. To make your workspace smaller, you can select one of these boxes and then drag it inwards or outwards if you want to make it bigger. When you have chosen the size of your workspace, you can add elements. Since this is the home page, I'm going to add three buttons and I'm also going to add a label, which is essentially a text box. To change the text on the label or the button, you need to double click on the element and then you can change the text to whatever you need it to be. Similar to the workspace, you can resize elements by clicking on them and then dragging the box further away or closer to them to make them bigger or smaller. Now that I've finished changing the size, text and position of my elements, I can change things such as the font, font color or background color. To do that, you need to select an element then go to these three boxes on the side. Once you click one of these boxes, a window will appear. Since I have clicked the font color box, I can now change the font color. I can select a basic color, a custom color, or use a HTML or hex number to get the color I would like. Then you can simply select the color and click OK. Once you have done this, the font color of the element you have selected will be changed. The same goes for changing the background color. You click on the box, on the right hand side of back color and the same window will appear. However this time it changes the background color instead of the font color. But it works the same. So once I select the color and click OK, the background color of the element will be changed. Just like before, I'm going to quickly change the background color and font color of the elements and the workspace. The workspace works just like the elements. So you need to click on it and then select one of the boxes such as back color to change the background color of the workspace. Changing the font is nearly identical to changing the font color or the background color. You need to select the element, then click the box next to font. From there a window will appear. However, there is more to change such as the font style, size and font itself, but you can also add effects such as strikeouts and underlining it. So just like before, I'm going to select the font I would like, and then I'm going to select the size of that font that I would also like and then click OK for the font size and font to be changed. Now that you have finished the aesthetics of your GUI, such as the font size, font color, as well as the color of your GUI, you'll need to add an event function for each button you would like to be interactive. I'm going to add three event functions, one for pounds, one for dollars, and one for euros. To add an event function, simply write the name you would like to add, and then click add new. From there, Select the element you would like to link it to, such as the pounds button, and then go to the event function drop down menu and select the event function. The same goes for dollars and euros. Finally, when you are finished with this widget or page of your GUI, you can click done and the code will automatically be generated 
like so. Now I'm going to create a widget or page for a pounds currency converter. To do that, I'm going to click the GUI designer icon and then click new. From here, I'm going to call this widget pounds converter. Another way of changing the size of your workspace or elements is going on the right hand side and putting in a smaller number or a bigger number like this. Now that you have changed the size of your workspace, you can add the elements that you're going to use. I'm going to use one label here as the title, one label here for pounds, and then I'm also going to use a combo box here to select whether I'm going to change into dollars or euros. Then I'm going to add two line text boxes, one here and one here. Finally, I'm going to add one button near the bottom. When this button is clicked, it's going to trigger an event function that will convert the pounds into the user's currency of choice on the right hand side. Now, just like before, I'm going to quickly change the size, position and text of these elements. As the combo box is a text-based element, the same rules apply to it. So you can change the font just like a label here and the font color here as well. And also to add more text or remove text, you'll need to double click on it and then you can type what you would like it to say. Now that I've finished with the aesthetics of my GUI, I can move on to the event functions. This time I'm only going to be needing two event functions. One for this convert button and then one for this combo box. Once I've finished linking event functions to their elements, I can work on adding and changing different things, such as the cursor. As you can see by any element that I select, I can change this cursor by using this drop down menu. And then when I click done, the code will automatically be generated. If you would like to change anything on your GUI or widget, it is never too late. Just click the GUI designer icon and then select the widget that you would like to change and click edit. Then you can add elements just as before. I'm going to use this button as a home button. And then just click done and any changes to the GUI will automatically be made and saved. Now that the code for the elements and widgets has been generated, we can work on coding the event function. The first event function I'm going to code is the combo box event function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the value of the combo box and put it in a variable called combo box value. The first one I'm going to do is the combo box event function. All this event function will do is get the value of the combo box and save it in a variable called combo box value. All I need to do to code that is to define the variable combo box value as self dot combo one and then dot get as this gets the value of the combo box. Now that we have the value of the combo box, I can now code the event function convert. All the even function convert does is if the combo box value is dollars, it's going to times the value of pounds by 1.38. If the combo box value is euros, it's going to times the value of pounds by 1.18. So as you can see here, combo box value gets the value of the combo box. Pounds is equal to the value of the first line text box that we have. And then we need to turn pounds into a flow. By casting the pounds variable as a float, it means that we can then multiply it by decimals. And then for the final part, we check if combo box value is equal to dollars. And if it is, we times the value of pounds by 1.38 and then round it to two decimal places. Just before that, we clear the line text box we have underneath dollars and insert the value of dollars. However, if combo box value is not equal to dollars, then it has to be euros. So euros is equal to pounds times by 1.18. And then just like the dollars, we're going to round the euros to two decimal places before clearing the line text box underneath the euros and then inserting the value of euros into that same line text box. Now that we have finished the event functions for the pounds converter page, we can start coding the event functions for the home page. The pounds event function will just open the pounds converter page. 
So to do that, we're going to need to first close the current page. So that is what self.w1.destroy does. And then A is equal to pounds converter, or pounds converter is the page we're trying to open. And then A.w1.main loop opens that page for us. But now, since it's being opened on the pounds event function, I can get rid of this code. To do the same thing for the dollars and euros event function, we would need to create a page like pounds converter, but instead it would need to be for euros and for dollars. We can see if the GUI works by evaluating it. As you can see, we have got the home page, and now when I click pounds, it should take me to the pounds converter page, which it does. Now to see if the pounds converter page works, I need to type in a number here. So let's start off with one and click convert and it converts it to $1.38. Now let's change it to euros and click convert. And it converts it to one euro and 18 cents. The same goes for if we add more numbers, such as 44. The evaluate button essentially runs and executes the code. The build and run button, however, is simply a preview of the deploy application. So it is a preview of the independent application you will be making. The deploy button itself creates an independent application that won't automatically be executed, but will only be executed when the application itself is opened. If you do deploy your independent app, you can share it with an unlimited amount of people and computers. You can instantly run it and there will be no need for MatDeck or Python on the computers. The Python parameters are already preset as well, which makes it incredibly easy to run on any device. Python comes already installed with all MD products. The Python GUI designer also comes with pre-installed libraries such as Tinkta, NumPy, OpenPy XL, Matplotlib, SciPy, Time, Sockets, Requests, Pip, and BS4. There are also no royalties for any app or software that you make using the MatDeck GUI designer or Python GUI designer. Some features that are unique to the Python GUI designer is that all Python parameters are already set and that you can mix Python, C and MatDeck C++ styled script. You can also easily create independent apps by using the deploy button. Once you do create an independent app or software, you can open, use and share it with as many computers as you'd like. You can also use Python in MatDeck documents alongside more than 50 various GUIs which can be mixed with the Python code. When you mix the Python code, the variables will automatically be passed into the code without you needing to declare them. 